Hello from North Queensbury in Fife, on the edge of the Firth of Forth. We've invited our six talented semi-finalists here today to paint an icon of engineering excellence. It's huge, it's red, it's the fourth bridge. Welcome to the semi-final of Landscape Artist of the Year. Over a single glorious summer, we visited some of the most spectacular corners of our country. It's bloody green, but you know, England is bloody green. From bustling seaside harbours to surreal modern vistas, over a series of demanding heats, we've challenged our artists to depict these magnificent views as their own works of art. I haven't tried painting bubble wrap, but I imagine it's quite similar. <laughs> From the thousands that applied for this year's competition, just 40 artists were chosen, each tasked with completing their landscape in just four hours. I have a sense of urgency about the way you're working, not panic. Um, I think you could describe it as panic. <laughs> The artists have toiled under pressure in their chosen mediums. It's the nightmare bit. Ink everywhere. Now only the winners of the five heats remain, ready to battle it out for a place in this year's final. Awaiting the eventual winner is a prestigious prize, a £10,000 commission from Manchester Art Gallery to create a piece that celebrates both the natural beauty and the industrial heritage of the North West. To claim that coveted prize and this year's title, the artists will need to impress our three ever-watchful judges. I feel as if I've fallen into some sort of mathematical nightmare. <laughs> I mean, what is going on? Just three of today's semi-finalists will go through to the final, but to prevail, they'll need to push themselves to their limits. What are you working on? Aluminium panel. Mmm. Have you done it much? Once. <laughs> Once? Yeah. Once, OK. And we're in the semi-final. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Of the artists who triumphed in their heats and will today compete for a place in this year's final, three are professionals. Alicia Enfield, Rebecca Noel Purvis and Thomas McGregor. I'm still a little bit shocked about making it to semi-final. Ultimately, what I really want to do is just not embarrass myself on, on national television and just do something that's uh, a passable painting, really. Painting alongside them are two amateur artists, Afshin Nazir, and Desmond Downs. A semi-final, this is crazy. I don't believe it's happening, you know? <laughs> and the heat was more about the fun. We're just getting more serious now. Got this far, I've got to try and do better, right? At each of the heats, a further 50 wildcards also took part, employing a broad range of approaches. Cutting edge technology. <laughs> for the prize of just a single place in today's semi-final. You are our wild card winner today. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> well done. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. 250 wild cards took part, and as their overall winner, well done. The judges chose Helen MacDonald Matthey. We loved the way you put paint on, the colours you're using for her diptych of the lake at Compton Verney in Warwickshire. I'm feeling quite emotional, actually, but I'm delighted. Helen was a clear choice for us judges. I think she was really ambitious, and there was a wonderful painterly, elegiac quality to the paintings that she gave us. She's got a really beautiful palette, a really gorgeous touch. It gives a strong sense of place, and that's what we're going to be looking for today from her. Being a wild card was fun, but this is a step up. It feels a little bit more like more pressure, but also I remember that they did like my work. Once we get going, I'll start to relax a bit more. Artists, painting the fourth bridge is famously a never-ending task, but not for you. You have just four hours to complete your painting. And because it's the semi-final, we're expecting a truly outstanding work of art from each of you. May the fourth be with you. Your semi-final challenge starts now. Today, our artists are on the north bank of the Firth of Forth. 
the estuary that separates the Scottish regions of Fife and Lothian. One of Scotland's truly iconic landmarks, the fourth rail bridge dominates their view, stretching across the water for one and a half miles to the far shore, with the distant Lothian Hills in the background. What an incredible view we have given our artists. The fourth bridge in all of its glory, it's graceful, it's this emblem of Scotland. It's this fantastically strange red colour. It's a casual 50,000 tonnes of steel, and it's actually quite far away, so the artists have to think so carefully about their compositions, about scale, about storytelling, and actually about detail. You know, are they going to go for this detail? Are they going to leave it out? And they've got to do it on what looks like a pretty grey, gloomy day with no contrast or shadows. I mean, it's the semi-final. We have to give them a challenge. Confronted with such a titanic structure emerging from the murky Scottish morning, our six semi-finalists are steeling themselves for the challenge ahead. It's a big red bridge, <laughs> so there's no getting away from it. It's very, very grey and misty, so I'm hoping that that'll lift because the red will go really well against the blue sky. I think it's going to be a bit tricky today because it is a flat morning starting off and there is so much architecture. I think I have to pinpoint it down just a little bit because otherwise I'll just be drawing forever. I'm kind of trying not to look at the scene because the sun's going to be out soon, I think. I'm gambling and that's going to change everything, you know. It's a train, see? <laughs> it's all about scale, that huge bridge. It's got to feel big. Amateur artist Desmond Downs lives on the rugged west coast of Ireland, a landscape that inspires much of his work. In his heat at Whitstable Harbour, he chose to tackle the asphalt factory looming over the quayside. And given the scale of the view today, he has yet another surprise up his sleeve. Desmond, you've gone wee. I've gone wee. How come? I'm in Scotland. We've got, we got a big thing here, though, and you've gone tiny. I know. For me, actually painting outdoors, this is as big as I would go. You OK. Know? But when you're confronted with a structure that's this monumental, yeah. how do you sort of translate that into a smaller space? I'm going to just do a section of it. I'm settled on the little caravans at the bottom and the builders' huts there. They are sort of in the shade of this massive bridge. OK, so you're looking to fill the board yeah. with that looming yeah. presence yeah, in a way. Yeah, try and make it look as big and as uh, intimidating as possible. The most important thing now is to get the scale of it right. Well, it's a beautiful start, and I think the crop is gorgeous. Thank you very much. One of our other artists has decided on a more expansive approach to today's view. I decided to have the whole bridge in. I just need to be happy with the positioning of that. And then the sense of distance and space will come in. It's really just about getting some good strokes down. So I've got a steady hand. That's, that's the biggest challenge. Thomas McGregor is a professional artist and horticultural therapist from London. His bold use of green and red and thickly applied oil paint in his rendering of the gardens at the Eden Project earned him his place in this year's semi-final. Do you know this part of the world? I do know this part of the world. I lived in Edinburgh for 12 or so years. Ah. So I crossed the bridge many times. OK. Painted it before? Never painted it before, no. And how do you feel about it as a challenge? Challenging as a challenge. It's a little bit daunting because it's such an iconic image. The challenge is just getting that right and trying to make it your own. You're working on quite a big canvas there. Yeah, I just want to do justice to the bridge, but the sky as well, which there's not much to speak of. No. But, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm confident that I've at least got something in that is definitely the, the fourth rail bridge. So. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Well, it's a big bridge. It is. And you've got a big canvas. A lot of girders. And I'm expecting big things. Though the morning's flat sky is giving some of our semi-finalists cause for concern, one artist in particular is relishing it. There's quite a nice kind of gloomy Scottish atmosphere at the moment. The atmosphere has always been important to me in my work, so if I can get a sense of what it's like being here, which is pretty overwhelming actually, then I'll be happy with that. Alicia Enfield from High Wycombe is a professional artist who looks for otherworldly elements in her landscapes. Her approach captivated the judges at the Eden Project, where she sidestepped the biome's bewildering geometry for something altogether more ethereal. 
and today she's upping the ante. Alicia, I recognize this format, landscape, small, potent, but I don't recognize the surface. What are you working on? This time I'm working on aluminium panel, Ooh. which is, yeah, new to me. Have you done it much? Once. <laughs> Once? Yeah. Once, OK, and we're in the semi-final. Yeah. Good. Uh, <laughs> so let's tick that risk-taking box. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, it obviously is not going to absorb paint, so what you're doing effectively is very surface orientated. Yeah, yeah, no, the absorbency is actually something that drew me to it. It's incredibly smooth. Yeah. You definitely have a kind of lustrous, enigmatic quality to your painting. And as always, you're taking me to a very kind of filmic place. I mean, it's this kind of ghostly apparition. Are you trying to dissect this through your particular lens? Yeah, I guess so. To me, it just felt like something from a post-apocalyptic movie when I turned up, especially it's so quiet today and the yeah. kind of gloomy weather. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it will come together. With an hour of the semi-final gone, for our artists, there's now no turning back on the decisions they've made, whether they like it or not. I've painted in red lines to represent the various girders. I mean, it's such a huge scale, the bridge. I've now, I think, reached the point of no return anyway, so there's no point in thinking about whether it's good or bad decision. I'm working with what I've got. There's this kind of weird silvery quality to the light, but I think that's really coming through with the shiny steeliness of the surface. It doesn't feel like it's anywhere near enough yet to get me any further, but see how we go. I'm trying to get a big bridge onto a small canvas. I decided to focus on these little builder's huts and they're in the shadow of this humongous bridge. Hopefully the bridge feels as big as it is, you know. That's kind of the illusion I'm trying to create. I think it's working. In the shadow of Scotland's iconic fourth bridge are six semi-finalists competing for just three places in this year's final are into the second hour of their challenge. And though the morning mist is gradually starting to lift, it's not happening quickly enough for one of our artists. There are no clouds today, <laughs> absolutely no clouds. The, gray, the sky is grey. It is very much out of my comfort zone, but in some ways I'm taking that as a, as a sort of challenge and a good thing. I'm hoping I can show the judges I can handle any sort of landscape. Drawn to pastoral scenes with dramatic skies, civil servant Afshin Nazir's heat at Warwickshire's Compton Verney was her very first time painting en plein air. Her evocative oil depiction of the gardens and lake enchanted the judges, earning her a place in today's semi-final. Now, Afshin, I think of you as loving clouds. Yes. So what do you make of today? There's just one big cloud. I was hoping for a really warm, sunny day, but so far it doesn't look like that's going to happen. You can just invent it. I could do, uh, but the way I've composed my painting today anyway, I'm trying to show my different sort of styles and what I do if I'm faced with something like this. So hopefully the reflections in the water will make up for the clouds. So you've done quite a complicated sketch. So what I've tried to do is zoom in to just one part of the bridge and the landscape, because I really like the way the landscape is under the arch, and then bring it back to the reflections in the water, hopefully. So I'm just trying to grid out the canvas in a way that speaks to that composition. So we're going to be watching for the reflections, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Hopefully they'll come through. Good luck. Thank you. I think it's my favourite location ever, ever, ever. Really? Yes. Why? Uh, because it's a really good bridge, yeah. but there's also all this other stuff around it. I think we could do a whole series here. Right. We've got the beautiful harbour with the reflections. We've got boats. I know I usually hate boats. I love these boats. It's just fantastic. It feels almost as if there's something for everyone here. You know, whatever you're into. Mm. If you're into water, if you're into grimy, industrial. Yeah. So there's a good set of ingredients here for yeah, our absolutely. artists. And so many ways of tackling it. And actually, all of them are slicing in different ways. So an iconic structure that we've seen in hundreds of photos and on banknotes, is that a trap for our artists? Yes, I think it's always difficult to reinvent something that is so well known. But actually, being here, I don't feel that issue 
at all because as the trains are trundling across and the birds are screaming, the light is changing, it's like I'm here for the first time. And I think they've got to paint what they see and not what they know. And I trust them all to find something new here. So it's the best location ever, as I said. Excellent. Well, uh, I look forward to seeing the Taishan Schirenberg School of Painting set up here. Just in one of those little porter cabins. <laughs> I painted a few of the Glasgow bridges, but in a very different manner. This is more monumental. But what I'm going to try and get is the imposing structure. You don't want it looking twee and fussy. That's the danger. Helena MacDonald Matthew is a retired art teacher who's lived in Scotland for almost 30 years. Competing as one of the 50 wildcards at Compton Verney, her ambitious oil and acrylic diptych of the lake saw her through top of the class as this year's winner. Helen, another lovely big landscape piece. Thank really you. getting the distance. And then you put the bridge on top. Yes, it is just such a powerful piece of engineering. So I'm hoping to recreate some of that majestic presence. OK. But also get the reflections and conjure up some of the spirit of the life going on around it. The bridge is this fantastic skeleton at the moment. Yes. Are you going to bulk her out this afternoon? Yes, I am, because I think that would do justice to the structure, because yeah. it's not a light structure. And are you worried about over-rendering the bridge? Because, of course, if you put all of that detail in, you'll lose something yes. of this grace. No, no, no. I'm hoping to accentuate the solidity mm. by having deeper tones at the bottom and then getting paler to give that sense of height. height. But there's a reason I'm not an architectural engineer. <laughs> so <laughs> I think the key is to make it look as if there's a lot of detail, but there isn't. So I'm going to try and keep it loose. Well, I'm curious to see this bridge emerge. Though all today's artists are faced with the same colossal structure, they're approaching the task in very different ways. I've chosen to focus on one section of the bridge. I really like doing the nature with the architecture. There aren't any prominent trees, but the bridge, I just think of it as a giant tree. We'll see how it goes. Originally from Pennsylvania, mixed media artist Rebecca Noel Purvis now lives in Northumberland. Her approach, pastel, charcoal and gouache paint on brown paper, was put to great effect in her heat-winning work of the trees in the grounds at Compton Verney. Rebecca, usually in your drawing, nature dominates. Yes. Here, nature is rather not dominating. It's not dominating at all. Um, I do quite like, though, the subtle hillside behind the bridge. Yes. So I'm going to try to play on those sloth colors behind with the dominant red in front. And then, you yeah, have the reflections in the water as well. So, ah, now you've gone well, vertical. This looks very much like you're going to take a slice out. Is it because you I want am. to get into the water? It is. I'm quite interested in the way the water is moving as opposed to the structure of the bridge. So that's another so that's, organic shape, of yes. course, you can use. I'm intrigued. I've always loved the way you start thinking through the problem. And there's Thank quite you. a big problem there to is. work with. The artists are now halfway through their challenge. And at this stage, given the scale of the bridge and testing conditions, it's all about maintaining focus. Or not as the case may be. I've taken my glasses off, so I can't get any details now. I'm not sure I got the struts of the bridge right. When my glasses are off, it focuses on the bolder, broader brush strokes to make sure the bridge looks magnificent rather than flimsy. When I saw the reflections in the water, I knew I wanted to do it on this brown paper. But with the light changing the reflections, you kind of lose your place very easily. So it's, I'm trying to hold the image that I saw first thing in my head, but it's not going very well. My plan at the moment is to just work more on the reflections in the water. The next couple of hours are really going to be crucial to get this bring this all together because at the moment it's just a little bit of a mess.
On the Firth of Forth, our six semi-finalists are into the third hour of their landscape challenge. And to add to their headaches, the light continues to change, with the morning scotch mist finally burning off. Desmond, the sun is starting to appear for the first time, really, today. Yep. The plan was the sun was to come out an hour ago, two hours ago. <laughs> OK, so you built, you built that in. You've got a blue sky there. Yeah, I'm OK. I kept sort of middle ground. I mean, an iconic bridge. What are the challenges of painting that? It's very technical, so it has to be sort of architecturally correct. You yeah. know, if I have anything out of whack, it's going to jump off the canvas, you know? Yeah. So I try and keep the proportions right. Well, those little buildings at the bottom certainly give you a sense. They will. And a nice little bit of detail in those now towards the end. That's where all the contrast will be and the focal point. Uh, I think that'll help make that bridge look ominous. OK, well, I better let you get on with it then. <laughs> you better have. I better, yeah. <laughs> Thomas, my goodness, these colours are just a gift with your palette. I mean, you must have thought, I've arrived. Yes. <laughs> I was very pleased with the red and, and mm. green. I mean, I think I've deeply exaggerated, I think, but then a lot of it was painted when everything was still clouded in mist, so it was a lot of anticipation of what was going to happen. You're doing something that none of the other artists are doing in the composition. What made you decide to choose the whole view? It felt like it had to be one thing or the other. What is so impressive is the scale. I haven't achieved it yet. But what I think you've managed to capture is the sense of movement and the fact that it is about travel. Because of the angle, I get a sense of propulsion. Will we see a train on it, for yeah, example? I don't know. I've got an image in mind of the Flying Scotsman going over the top with plumes, or something, which I think would almost be too obvious to try and put in. Well, it's looking great. Better get on with it. So, Rebecca, we have given you something quite spectacularly horizontal. Yes. <laughs> you, Very horizontal. And you've gone vertical, which I, I salute you for. So um, the water's going to be a huge proportion of this It work. is. If I carry it all the way down, I'm, I'm contemplating not, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Oh, hang on, contemplating. You think you're cutting it? I'm contemplating doing something more square. Ooh. But, well, I'll see. So I guess if you go square, you're going to have a very contained energy. It would be very contained energy. Yeah, total yes. change of format, potentially. Yeah. We'll see what the day brings. OK. The judges have been keeping a watchful eye on the artists all morning. With the gloom now receding, what light can they cast on progress so far? Here we are halfway. And we're also under the fourth bridge, so it's not surprising that there are lots of trains going by. Mm -hmm. It won't deter us from our judgment. So, let's consider Alicia, because of all the people here, she seems not to quite have found her style yet. Oh, I don't know about that, because I think Alicia does these kind of quite haunting, filmic, strange little paintings, and I think we've got the beginnings of one. I mean, it's on this aluminium surface. The aluminium wants nothing to do with that paint, and I love that tension that it creates. The atmosphere that was, it was here early on in the day, it's now burning off, but I think it's all there in her smudgy painting. The issue now is how to get what is there, which is quite slight, and fix it more. And I don't know how Alicia's going to do that without losing what's there. Afshin, of course, loves cloud particularly, and the sky was just grey this morning. Mm. It's lifted a little, but it's not given her the sort of material she wants. But the bridge is way up high in the top section of the canvas, so cleverly she actually doesn't have to deal very much with the sky. But that gloopiness of the paint that's starting to sort of arrive immediately takes you to Afshin's moody, symbolist world. So her unique stamp is already starting to be present. For me, the painting was a bit flat this morning, but now the sun's come out and I saw her just really start to play with the reflections. I feel quite excited, actually, that now it could really start to sing. Now, Desmond's doing the most mathematical reproduction of the bridge. Is that successful? Desmond's a seasoned plein air painter. What is interesting is the bridge is elegant, but Desmond has certainly caught the weight of it. Maybe by compressing the whole thing down to a very small painting, he's trying to say something about the bridge. But I'm a bit disappointed. I was hoping he would be a bit more courageous and give us a bit more. Yeah, I think what we're not seeing at the moment is the balance with the bottom section where he's going to deal with the water. And we know he's good at water. So I think once we see those two elements, it will come together very well. Now, Helen is the wild card. What do we feel about where she is now? 
it's lovely that it's got a, a lightness and a brightness. I think I'm interested to see the bridge become more developed. I think what Helen did in the morning was very graceful, but we do need to get a bit more power into this painting this afternoon. Yeah, Helen was chosen for her mark making, that sort of strange abstraction that was beautiful to look at, but also suggested something else. But it's early days. Maybe the abstraction comes with just working with the subject and going over and over it again. It's quite traditional now. I'm hoping that it goes a bit off. Rebecca has chosen the particular central pillar. What do we make of what she's doing? I think Rebecca's concerns are always about the man-made and the natural world. And by giving us that slice, of course, she's been able to give us all the reflections, the water under the bridge. And I think what's there is elegant. In a funny way, for a drawer to find atmosphere is quite difficult. She's done it. I think, for me, the big question is, will she cut it in half? Will she do these fabulous reflections? I want the fabulous reflections. Let's consider Thomas. How's he doing? I'm really excited by the fact that he's given us the span. It reminds me, looking at his painting, just of quite how extraordinary this bridge is. It makes me think of a kind of stone being skimmed across the water, and it's an ambitious composition. What's curious about Thomas's work is the construction of it. He sort of started with this drawing, and then the greens came on top, and then the red wash was coming on top, and at the moment, I'm finding it slightly hard to read. But the interesting thing is he's captured the bridge as everyone knows it to be, which is bright red. The green and the red is his go-to set of colours anyway, so the palette is familiar, and he's dropped the bridge down, so we've got a lot of sky, the blissfully blue-skied, green-skied, actually, afternoon that we're going to have. So halfway, we've got six here. You, between you, have got to choose three yes. to go forward to compete with each other in the final. Yes. Are you beginning to shape your preferences? I find at this point of the day, I'm thinking about whose work is exciting me enough to want to see another painting mm. from them in the next round. The weather's changed and the bridge's appearance has changed dramatically. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how they respond to that. Good luck, it gets harder all the time. As our artists today have noticed, the fourth bridge is rarely without a train rattling across it. For centuries, an important crossing point for travellers, by the late 1800s, the amount of water traffic across the Firth meant a permanent crossing was required. In 1881, civil engineers John Fowler and Benjamin Baker won the contract to design a bridge unlike any other built before. A cantilevered structure for maximum strength and stability, the fourth bridge was groundbreaking in design, materials and scale. At 8,000 feet in length, not only was it the longest cantilevered bridge in existence, but also the first major structure anywhere in the world made entirely of steel. When you look at it, you really get an idea of the work that was undertook to build it. If you consider that there are six and a half million rivets in it, imagine every single one of those rivets being driven in. At the peak, there was four and a half thousand people working on the bridge. Can you imagine working up there on a busy, windy day, torrential rain and storms lashing through? It must have been exhilarating, but frightening, but also the pride that you must have had when this bridge was completed. Designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2015, the fourth bridge transports over three million rail passengers annually and stands today as a symbol of Victorian engineering skill, ambition and ingenuity. On the waterfront in North Queensfree, and now contending with a sunlit bridge, a far cry from the ghostly apparition that met them this morning, our artists are into the final hour of the competition. I've seen we've got a new arrival, the sunshine and the blue sky. We have. How a little do bit you too feel late. about it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> do that sound bitter? I thought that you would quite like it because such a huge part of your painting is going to be these gorgeous reflections. I imagine that the sunlight on the water is a quite tantalizing prospect. Yeah, I mean, the, the reflections have become more prominent, but they were always going to feature in my painting yeah. anyway and you're starting to do those beautiful passages of paint that we love so much. Are you comfortable about time? I still have loads to do. Yeah. How I work, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, so yeah. uh, it now needs all the jigsaw puzzle sort of colour pieces to be blobbed in so they make sense. Yeah. Um, I love all these technical terms, blobbed they in. They are very technical terms, Let's get yes. those blobbed in pieces. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to seeing your treatment of the water. I feel like your painting style and this water could be a perfect marriage.
Alicia. Now, you've been courageous and you've added colour. Is it working? Yes and no. It's not not working, but it's not what I want it to be yet. OK. And that's a gut feeling. Yes. You'll recognise it when it's right. Yes. And is it colour or tone or touch or everything? Somewhere in the middle of all of those things. <laughs> OK. Your paintings have a definite mood. As you're building this bridge, are you aware that you want to have some atmosphere to it and that you need to make the painting in a certain way? Yes, definitely. That's what it is. OK. And now the sky's turned blue. <laughs> yeah. There's absolutely no atmosphere whatsoever. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, I was quite enjoying all that moodiness before. With the oil sliding on the aluminium, it's behaving very strangely. Is yes. it doing what you want it to do? Definitely. Okay. I think it's giving some really interesting textures. It's doing a lot of the work for me <laughs> a weird Good. way. But... Oh, great. Well, look, I'll let you struggle on in a happy way. Helen, every time I've walked past here, you've looked relaxed, <laughs> you've looked calm, you look like you're having fun. Um, you're not well, here to have fun. No. You're well, here for I a semi final. Had it all day. I've had one or two shaky moments. When you realise that you haven't got your lines straight, the Victorians wouldn't be very happy. No. When I go over there, yeah. I'm a little bit happier with it. The further away you get, the darker the light, the better it looks. Right. <laughs> But you push and pull it back all day. It's a bit of a game, uh -huh. you know. But no, I would determined to enjoy it. Are you winning, the, are you winning it. the game? I don't know. Some parts of that bridge, I think I've made it look quite pretty. So I don't know well, whether that's right or not. Well, as an honorary Scot, I, I know the whole of Scotland will be cheering you well, on. Well, hopefully, yes. So good luck. Thank you. With the clock ticking down, there's still time for some drastic 11th hour rethinks. The light has changed, and that is really challenging with the water. So I have decided to make my composition square. I will have to sacrifice some of the reflections, but I think um, I'll have enough to be able to have a balance. It's frantic. I think some bits are done for now, and some bits aren't. The angle of the sun has just changed slightly to get these really fantastic shadows cast by the bridge. I could get a bit in. I need more time space, is what I'm saying. I am a bit panicky on behind. I have my work cut out. I might make up some sunlight on the bridge, because when it hits it straight on, is brighter than the actual sky behind it. So it's tricky. I'm looking calm. <laughs> Inside, I'm not. On the water's edge of the Firth of Forth, our six artists are into the last stages of their semi-final challenge. Just three of them will go through to this year's final, and with the sun now beating down, the heat is on. Thomas, I have a sense of urgency about the way you're working. How would you describe it? Not panic? Um, I think you could describe it as panic. <laughs> There's a certain franticness that I want to get in there anyway, so that it lends itself quite well, so long as I don't get too out of control. And you'll stay with the water from now on, will I you? I think so, yes, with a little bit of flitting about. I'll leave you to it. Alicia, you're smearing your painting. Yeah, I thought wiping away my paint like a mad person uh, might give a kind of shininess similar to the metal on the bridge. So right. that's as far as I thought, if I'm honest. <laughs> I've decided to put some highlights on the bridge because it has brightened up. I could just keep working on it, working on it, but if I do any more, I might push it a little too over the edge. Artists, your semi-final challenge is almost over. You have five minutes left. Oh, OK. There's quite a lot in the water that still needs resolving. There are things that I've just not done, but whether I've done enough is to be seen. I'm going over the whole thing and just touching it up. It's panic stations now. I'm struggling to keep it under control. Just keep painting until time's gone. Your time is up.
Please put down your materials and stand away from your artwork. There was more pressure today. There were two times when I was thinking, oh, no, I want to run away. But then I, I managed to, to get it back again. And I feel I did a good job. Hold on. That was a tough one. While the artists take a break, the judges now have the chance to cast a critical eye over our six semi-finalist finished works of art. It's a glorious day in front of an iconic bridge. And looking at the finished paintings, they've all had to make a decision. Yeah and they've all made very different decisions. I think they've captured the bridge in all its forms. It's a really good range. So Thomas has given us almost the full bridge, yeah. a large canvas, really rich colours. How did he get on today in your eyes? I think Thomas has given us a painting of tremendous energy and character. It looks like the paint's enjoying being there. I was worried at first that the red bridge would look almost illustrative, but I think it's really helped by the way he's treated the water, which is very abstract. I love the way Thomas puts down paint, the colours suit him. He's turned them all up to 11 because the bridge never really got that red. The green of the hills behind is acid, and the bridge is something that takes us away from here. It has movement in it. It shows us what its purpose is, and that's rather wonderful. Rebecca has created a sense of drama, hasn't she, with her framing? I think it really captures that kind of misty grey morning we had. And as a consequence, we get one of those classic Rebecca moments where it feels like a treasure that's been hidden away and un unearthed in the attic. But I think probably all three of us lament not seeing her treat the water. And I'm not a fan of this black line at the bottom for me. It's too abrupt. It might have worked better if she'd cut it. But I get completely transported through the airiness of the bridge to that landscape in the far right-hand corner. It's so rich and lush. I think that works really, really well. Now, at half time, I accused Alicia of not really having got as far as anyone else with her concept. But I think it's come through. What I love about Alicia's bridge is that it's totally wrong. She's not got every strut in the right place. It's a reinterpretation. And then she pins the bridge down with that nicely observed end of the bridge on the other side that yeah. goes off into the mist. So she gives us enough to give us a sense of place, atmosphere, light. And the whole thing feels otherworldly. And this kind of imaginative leap, I think, is incredibly courageous. Mm. Yeah, there's a dark malevolence that I love <laughs> about Alicia's painting. And with these two separate sections of the bridge that she's given us, they are animalistic. And it's like they've got a gaping jaw. Yeah. You know, and, and they're blood red and it's dripping. And I love that smooth finish. Helen's given us an altogether different bridge and a slightly more fragile looking bridge. Yeah, Helen's bridge is a bit fragile. I'd said at lunchtime I would hope that she would make this more robust. She increased the gravitas of it a little bit, but I don't think she's gone quite far enough. Although I do think her treatment of the hills behind is just really lovely. I mean, Helen's skill was those exuberant marks and the expressionistic way of putting paint down. Now, when you do that with objects such as trees and hills, you've got something to work with. And here we've given Helen a structure where you've got to be quite precise about it. So it's been very difficult for her, I think, to adapt her paint marks to what we have given her. Having said that, there is an incredible space and light in this. So she's conjured that very well. Perhaps of all the bridges, Desmond's is the one I would be most happy to cross. Uh, he's a very technically accomplished painter, isn't he? I mean, Desmond has given us the weight of the bridge. A lot of them, I think, struggled with this elegant structure, but it has got weight, and I think Desmond got round it by going to the point where it's anchored and where the little cluster of caravans give you a sense of its majestic height. What I really love about Desmond's painting is the colour palette. It's so sensitive. He really understood the colour of this bridge and actually loved it. I think that this tight crop is very effective, but I would like to have seen a bit more. He could have gone slightly larger. I would like to have seen the reflections in his hand. We're greedy. We like this. We want more of this. Afshin is a mind bender, isn't oh. she? The way she's treated the reflections on the left-hand side is different from the way she's treated reflections on the right-hand side. What's she trying to do to me? <laughs> well, that's what we like about Afshin's work, is this kind of discrepancy between the mark making and what it suggests. And in some of the reflections, it works very well. And I quite like the fact that in some of the reflections, it doesn't work at all. But I love the mood, I love the colours, and I do think that she's extended her range. I do love the quality of the paint that Afshin uses. So I'm prepared to forgive her some of the bits that I think aren't quite there. But there's both a lightness and a weight to that bridge. 
I'm transported to that island. There's a real sense of distance. There's a lot I find of interest in that painting. It keeps me for a while. So it's the semi-final. What are you looking for? Are you looking for a painter whose style you enjoy? Are you looking for a painter who's getting better each time? It's about promise, and it's about thinking about a really big prize and a big commission that's just around the corner. You know, who do we think has fulfilled in their potential enough to get to that stage? We've got six artists, we need three. Mm -hmm. Are you sure we can't have a fourth? <laughs> <laughs> so who's done enough to make it through to the final? I find this one, it's too traditional. I can definitely let that one go. The sense of light in this tells more. This one's really growing on me. So that's a very strong lineup. I think the range of painting that we're going to see is going to be really exciting. Artists, reaching the semi final means all of you have already impressed the judges with your vision and your skill. But now six must become three as the judges have selected which artist will go forward to the final stage of the competition. The first artist who will be competing in the final is Thomas McGregor. The second artist is Alicia Enfield. And the third artist to reach the final is Afshin Nazir. To those who won't be meeting again, our huge thanks and our admiration for reaching this far. Thank you very much. Well done. Well done. I can't believe it. It's, um, it's just too surreal. It means a lot because this is something I've always wanted to do. I wanted to go to art school and I was just never able to because life uh, took over. And so this is an amazing opportunity to do what I really love doing. Well, Thomas, we'll see you again. Well done, well done. I've been happy, excited, uh, stressed, relieved, and to go get another shot is amazing. But that is gorgeous, really comfortable. Completely overwhelmed. I hadn't even considered it, so it's brilliant. <laughs> Vaguely terrified about the challenge ahead, but it's been amazing and I'm glad I get to keep doing it. Going to celebrate tonight, having that massive glass of wine I wanted last night. See where it takes me from there. <laughs> what a fantastic day we've had. And this location is one of my favorites. It really was a good test to get us three very good finalists. They're all at very different points in their career. You know, Thomas is established, you know, he's got his own style. Then we've got Afshin, who is really just sort of discovering painting in a way. And then we've got Alicia, who's like a, a really strong emerging contemporary artist. So it's it's really exciting three that we've managed to get together. I think what they all are is they're testament to the fact that there's just such interesting painting being yeah. made. Long live landscape. <laughs>